Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to the Wings of Healing podcast. My name is Evangelist Josh Gray, and I want to do a, a lesson for you on Amen, don't say it unless you mean it. Amen, don't say it unless you mean it. Um, you know, Amen's a word, you know, we've all heard it, you know, especially if you go to church, you've heard it many times. We probably most of you have said it. Um, but I think sometimes we don't realize really what a powerful word and what it means. And there's a lot in that little four letter word. Now, before I go in uh, more detail, a um, couple fun facts I would like to give on the word Amen. Um, it's found 78 times in the Bible. Uh, and also, Amen, this is really neat, is the same in every language. So even when you look up the word Amen um, in the Greek and in the Hebrew, uh, like in the Bible, it's the exact same word. And so... You know, uh, you can speak a little bit of German now, because, amen, you can speak a little bit of French, amen, you can speak a little bit of Spanish, amen, of any language, because that amen is the same in every language. I just thought that was really neat. Shows you what a powerful war that is. Uh, so now let's talk about really what it means. So first of all, amen, it means truth. It means so be it. Um, so it's truth and so be it is what it means. So when you say that word, that's what you're saying. You're either saying you're saying truth and you're saying so be it. So what does that mean exactly to us? Well, the first thing about amen, it's a word to use to show that you understand God's word. And that you agreed to it. So that's why it's such a powerful word. Because when you say it, you're saying, Lord, I understand what you're telling me, and I'm going to do it. Now we see this in a couple places. Uh, in one of them, it's Deuteronomy 27. I'm just going to read a few of the verses because it goes on uh, quite a few verses like this. But 15 through 19, it says, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that provideth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. So what was happening was, you know, God was telling Moses, you know, you read this law, and you tell the people this law, and after you tell them, I want them to say after each thing, Amen. That they understand it and that they agreed to it. So you can see already why you shouldn't just say Amen uh, really nilly. Uh, you shouldn't say it casually because it really does mean something. Um, another good example is found in Nehemiah chapter 8. Now, at this time, um, what's happening is that Nehemiah, he has rebuilt the wall and a revival is taking place in the city. Basically, the people of God are serving him again. And so um, they've been in captivity to Babylon. They have got their freedom. And now they're starting to establish the law again. And uh, so Nehemiah 8 verses 1 through 8, and we'll probably stop a little bit and kind of break it down. But starting with verse 1, it says, And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which is the law, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. 
Verse 2 says, And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all could heal with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Verse 3 says, And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand, and the ills of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Verse 4, And Ezra the scribe stood up on a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose, and beside him stood, and I apologize now, but I'll mess up these names, uh, Mephiphiah, and Sima, and Aniah, and Uriah, and Hekiah, and Ma- Messiah, on his right hand, and on his left, Padiah and Misael and Malachi and Hassam and Hasbadana, Zechariah and Mesalem. And Ezra, in verse 5, And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up, and Ezra blessed the Lord and the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up of their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. For seven, and also Jeshua and Benai and Serebiah, Jamin, Akub, Sabbathai, Hadijah, Messiah, Kalita, Azariah, Jezebed, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and people stood in their places. So they read the book of the law distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So really what we see here is where we get how we preach and stuff from, you know, the idea of preaching. Because Forrest, you know, he kind of stands up on a platform, so he's kind of high. You know, it wasn't for his ego. It was so the people could see him and heal him good. You know, they didn't have microphones and, and uh all these tech amp amplifiers and all this stuff. So he had to get high above the people to be heard. But the thing I want to really point out is they made sure that the people understood the word of God. And before the people cried, Amen, Amen, they understood the word of God and what was happening. Because, again, when they said amen, they was agreeing that they understood the word of God and agreeing that they was going to fulfill the word of God, that they was going to obey it. So, again, amen is a very meaningful and powerful word. Because when you say amen, what God heals is, yes, God, I understand, and yes, God, I'm going to do it. And if you don't, then you just made yourself a liar. So really be careful. You know, I mean, if you sit there when the preacher says, I want, you should pray every day and you're not praying, and you don't have any plan on praying, then, you know, you may not want to say amen. Because if you say amen, you say, yes, we should pray every day, and I'm going to pray every day. And you can say, well, no, I don't mean it that way. Well, that is what it means. And so we got to be careful. Um, and I, and I, again, I'm not saying if you don't say amen, you don't have to do it either. You should pray every day, even if you don't agree with it. You know, that's it will cause you issues. But what I mean is it's better to say, hey, I'm going to try. Then in your heart, you know you ain't going to do it and lie and say you will. Um, again, you need to. You need to pray. You need to follow the word of God. Uh, but also, don't add to it and lie, is, is my point. And, um, and also, you know, sometimes we can get caught up in the spirit of the service, and we say amen, and don't even know what we're saying amen to. Uh, I got a couple funny stories. One, I, uh, uh, I was at this big convention, and um, the preacher was preaching, and I remember uh, afterwards, one of the men, he had a hard time uh hearing what he said and uh a part of it and he said bunch of them was on their feet and they was clapping everybody was amen and 
And he asked the guy next to him, he said, why are we amening? And he said, I don't know, but everybody else is doing it. Um, again, you know, you don't do it just because everybody else is doing it. You amen because you agree with it and you plan on following it. Um, also, I remember uh, years and years ago, uh, I remember hearing this preacher. He talked about how he was a prideful. And he said, but it's okay. I recognize that I am prideful. And everybody amened. Well, it's not okay, you know, to be prideful. You know, especially if he recognizes it. He should, um, you know, that's something he should give to God and stuff. So again, be careful what you amen. Because you're showing God you're agreeing to it. It's not just a word. That's the point of the lesson. It's not just a word we say. You know, it's not just a fun way to end prayer. Uh, it really means something. It's not just a fun thing to shout when the preacher gets filed up. Um, I mean, if the preacher's calm and preaching, he says something that's true and that you understand and that you want to obey, then you should amen that. Because that's the whole purpose of the word amen. Now I want to talk for just a moment about prayer. In Matthew 6, uh, 9 through 14, you know, it's, of course, it's the Lord's prayer. And Jesus says, After this man, O therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Now when you say amen at the end of a prayer, you are putting it in God's hands, and you are saying, I trust you, God, so be it. Lord, what happens, I leave in your hands. And again, sometimes we'll pray and we'll say, God, you know, I want to, you know, you'll pray for something. You say, but Lord, your will be done. And sometimes, you know, God will answer our prayer, but it won't be what we want. But we've told him, your will be done. He'll do it according to his will. But we get mad. But the thing is, you said your will be done. And then you said, amen. So be it. Let it be done your way, God. You agreed that you put in his hands and you agreed that he could handle it how he seen fit. So again, if you're not going to do that, then be careful saying amen. But if you're going to say amen, then you need to let him and trust him. And whatever he does, trust him. That it was it's the right thing because you said amen, so be it. You put in his hands. So, amen, it's, it's a small word, but it really is a powerful word. Um, amen, you know, it, it means, so be it. You know, you're giving it to God and saying, I trust you to handle it. And if you're not going to do that, then again, be careful saying amen. Or if you say amen to the preacher, you know, and you have no plans on doing that, then you've really got yourself in double trouble. You're in trouble for not doing it anyways. But now you're lying and now you're being a hypocrite and you're being fake or you're risking that. You don't want to do that. Now again, I know sometimes we get caught up in the moment and we don't mean to and we do it out of not knowing battle, you know. We was taught, hey, you say amen when the preacher gets filed up. But that's why I want to do this lesson because amen... It's really a powerful word. And when you use it, you should mean it. And when you say amen to the word of God, you are saying, hey, I understand it. That's why Nehemiah made sure that those men in that city understood what Ezra was reading. Because when they said amen, they was agreeing that they understood it, but also that they was going to fulfill the law of God. And also in Revelations 3 and 14, it says, Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So God is the Amen. Jesus. Jesus is the Amen. And, uh, 
And again, I don't want to use his name vainly. And when I say man, he is the amen. He is truthful. He's faithful. He's always with me. He never lies to me. So I don't want, I want to be faithful to him. So if I say amen, I want to mean it. If I pray and I say, God, your will be done, amen, then however he answers it, I want to be okay with because I said amen. If I say amen to the word of God that it tells me to do something, I want it to mean that, hey, I do understand it. I'm going to apply it to my life. Amen. It's a four-letter word, a tiny, a small word, but it's a powerful word. It, um, and it's a word that we don't need to throw around and say it just casually, but we should say it with meaning. Um, let's bow our heads. Or again, if you're driving, don't do this, but, but you can pray with me still. And just pray with me today. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, again for allowing us to do this podcast. Uh, we ask those that's listening that, that that this word blesses them and helps them and lifts them up and teaches them something. I pray that you know we do understand the mighty, uh, the mightiness of that word, Amen. That we use it the right way, and that we follow your word and we obey it and we understand it, and that we obey it. And I thank you, Lord, for all those listening and bless their lives today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, I would like to thank you uh, for listening to the Wings of Healing podcast. My name is Evangelist Josh Gray, and have a wonderful day.